Echo! Hey guys, and welcome to one of the most poorly lit, most echoey vlog videos you will probably ever see on this channel. I am in the back room of the apartment, which is very empty right now because we are currently going through the very long, slow transition of moving homes, but I have a project I want to work on today, and I thought you guys would enjoy joining me for that project and seeing how I make my new cage. Now, of course, making a new cage is going to raise a few questions, but I have to ask you guys to be really patient with the answers because I'm not giving anything away just now. All I can say is that this new cage is not for potassium. Potassium is still in his Billy XL cage, and for the foreseeable future, he will remain in that cage. So this beautiful piece of wood I am currently leaning on is our old coffee table. It's the one I designed and built last year and did a video on over on my lifestyle channel. In case you're interested, bit of a shameless plug, oh well. So this is going to be my starting point. However, before I can actually get going with building the main parts of the cage, this does need something doing to it because I texturized this wood, which means it's full of grooves and cuts and holes and basically would be a real pain when it comes to cleaning out the substrate. So what I'm going to do, bear with me. I have some rolls of sticky back plastic left over from another project and I'm going to use these to cover the whole bottom part of this cage, the whole top of this coffee table. And what that's gonna do is cover up all the grooves and texturizedness on here and make the bottom much easier to wipe down. So when it comes to cleaning the cage out, just be able to take the substrate out, wipe it down nice and easy. I am probably not going to record the whole process of this because usually it takes me about 50 attempts of sticking it down, finding a million air bubbles and then ripping the whole thing up and redoing it. So let's skip ahead, shall we? Thankfully, it did not take as long to put that on as I thought it was going to. So that's gonna make it so much easier to wipe down the cage and keep it clean. It's also going to help with, because I know some of you will be asking this, it's gonna help with protecting against liquid damage. Now, when you're working with raw wood, like this kind of stuff that I'm working with for this project, there is always the small risk when it comes to pets, that there is going to be some liquid damage, and by that we mean urine damage. And when it comes to making toys and things that you don't expect to have super long lifespans, I don't feel that really matters. But certainly when it comes to making full cages, if you want to extend their lifespan, you do want to protect them in some way. Now you can do it using sticky back plastic like I have, you can do it using varnish and you can get clear varnish, colored varnish, whatever you want. My next step for this project is to add in the substrate borders. Now these are not going to be the full height of the cage, these are just to allow me to put plenty of substrate in. Oops, nearly fell over there. These are 20 centimeters high, 60 centimeters long, and I have two pieces to go at either end of the cage. To attach these two side pieces, all I'm going to do is screw in a couple of screws from underneath here, up into the piece of wood and that should be enough to hold them in place. Before I put the screws in though I do want to add a couple of pilot holes in here because this is a soft wood, it is pine wood and despite the fact I've made a video on it I'm sure people will say hey isn't pine wood bad? No, solid pine is perfectly safe, it's pine shavings that you can't use with small pets but pine is a soft wood and so it can split very easily so to make it less likely to split you drill a couple of pilot holes in the bottom here and send some screws up into this bits of wood and it should be nice and stable and uh, look fantastic or at least look like two bits of wood screwed together. Right, sides done, now to add on the back piece and for the back I have, if I move this out of the way, you'll see what that's for later, uh, I have this big piece which is, I think, 60 by 120. I don't know what I just hit. I hope it wasn't fragile. To make this job easier for myself, I have turned the cage base on its side and this is going to be attached. Uh, I'm gonna be attaching it over that lip of the cage. So it's gonna be screwed into this bottom lip and also into the side pieces. So same deal as last time. I'm gonna do a couple of pilot holes and then just use regular skew, 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 screws to hold it in place. <laughs> So sides are done, back is done. The next bit I think I'm going to do is add in the ventilation windows. And these are made to go on top 
of the side substrate borders like this. Uh, excuse me. Now, there are two ways I could have made this frame. The first way, the simplest way, is to just make a rectangular frame. So instead of having this slant on it here, it would have continued to go across and then back down and it would have created just a normal rectangular shape and that would be perfectly fine. The end result is the cage would just be a regular box cage. However, I wanted the cage to have a little more character to it so I added in this slant. Of course, if you were trying to recreate this cage and you didn't want to go through all the measurements and the cutting that's involved with making this slanted piece, then just do the regular rectangle, it will work exactly the same. To attach the mesh on the back, I've actually done something different to what I would normally do. In the past, I have always attached mesh, mesh using U-shaped nails, and you just hammer them in all the way around. It secures it, it works really well, but it takes a long time. This time, I decided to use my staple gun. And it's not a big, fancy, air-powered staple gun or anything like that, it's just a little manual handheld staple gun, and I just stapled the mesh in all around the edge. It took about 30 seconds to staple that into place. So if you have a staple gun, I highly recommend using it for projects like this because it's so much quicker. I wish I could go back in time and redo all of my projects with that gun instead of using nails. And once again, the same deal to attach this to the main cage. I'm gonna drill pilot holes in these bottom pieces here and along the side there as well. And I'm going to add the screws in so this is attached to the back of the cage. This is attached to the substrate border wall. And I've got one for each side. Right, so we are almost done. The mesh ventilation windows are now in. That's going to allow the air to flow through the cage because there is going to be a solid lid on top and the front, the doors that are on the front are going to be uh, perspex doors and they have a thin layer of plastic on them. So of course, you need to make sure there's plenty of ventilation, hence the big windows on the side. I've already put together the front border wall for this cage. Unfortunately, I didn't film myself doing it, uh, just because I did it bit by bit over a couple of days. And it's this piece here. This is just a very simple wooden frame. I made the wooden rectangle and then I added in these middle support beams. Uh, they're mostly decorative. It doesn't really need the extra support. And then here, you might not be able to see on the camera, but these are actually filled in. And this is where the perspex is. If I show you the back, it's not very neat and tidy because the perspex I used was not uh, measured and cut for this project. It was left over from another project. So I kind of had to just work with what I had. Uh, and I have one square of perspex there, one square there, and then a rectangle piece in the middle. And to attach those, all I did was drill very carefully because perspex does break easily, drill a hole into the perspex and then attach it using a washer and a small screw. And that's just what I've done all along there. And that's secure enough that it's not going to come off. Now, obviously, if you are recreating this cage, you could just go with a completely solid front wall for the substrate. I wanted it to be uh, see-through just because I prefer the way that looks but either way it will work just fine and I think this looks really really nice and you can't see the ugly messy perspex on the outside so yeah unfortunately I cannot attach this piece to the front of the cage just yet because there is one thing I forgot to do and that is to varnish the wood on the inside because I'm going to be varnishing with white varnish uh, the whole substrate border here front, the side bit there, and of course the back piece as well. But with this piece, I really should have varnished it before putting the perspex on, because if I try and do it now, it's going to be really difficult to do it around the perspex and not get it on the perspex itself. So I'm going to have to take that off, varnish it, let it dry, and then put it back on and then attach it to the cage. So again, if you're recreating this yourself, don't make that same mistake. Now the sun has gone down and it is starting to get dark very, very quickly. So the last thing I'm going to do this evening is to do that varnishing, varnish the inside of the entire cage and let it dry overnight. And then I will see you guys. Well, for you, it'll be in just a second. For me, it will be tomorrow afternoon. Hey guys, I am back. It is the next day and the cage is varnished and this is what it is looking like right now. I've also attached that front border on. So we're nearly there, nearly there. All that is left to do for the main parts of the cage is to add on the lid or the roof and then add on the two doors at the front. 
I do want to do some extra work on the inside of the cage, so adding things like shelves, bottle holders, stuff like that, but I think I'm going to do that in a different vlog for two reasons. One, I want to get this vlog up tonight, so I want to get it sort of wrapped up as soon as possible, and two, this vlog would go on forever if I included that extra stuff, so I think I will do the inside of the cage for a different video. So let's grab the roof of the cage, which is this piece of wood. You can see I've already done the pilot holes for this one, just to save a bit of time, and I'm going to lay that on top of the cage. Right, lid on. Now the next thing I want to work on is the two doors. Now I've got my two door frames over here. These are made from slightly thinner wood to the rest of the cage. See that it's very thin. I wanted them to be quite lightweight, but obviously still sturdy. The cage will obviously have two doors, this one that you can see, and the second one will go over there, and they are going to have perspex put in them here, but I haven't cut the perspex yet, so I'm going to attach the door frames now, and then I will add the perspex later on. Now before I go ahead and attach these frames to the cage itself, I'm gonna add on the handles. These are just very basic, normal, lovely looking silver handles, and to attach these, all I need to do is find the central point then I'm just going to take my drill drill right the way through the middle I do have a uh, piece of work board underneath so it doesn't matter if I drill into it and then I just take the thread that comes with the screw and just push it through that hole and then just screw that into place and tighten it from the back and to attach each door to the cage itself I have just a couple of basic hinges. I'm going to screw those onto the side and then we're going to screw them onto the cage. And there we are. That's what it looks like with the doors attached, or at least the door frames. Like I said, I haven't put in the perspex yet, but I'm going to do that sometime this week or when I have a free five minutes. I've also popped on this little lock, which is a little bit big for this door frame. So I do think I'm going to uh, get a smaller one, but it will do for now. And so I just have to unlock it and then the doors open up nice and easy giving you access inside the cage I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me build the new cage and part two of this vlog where I'll be doing all the stuff on the inside and doing all the little extra detail parts will be coming up pretty soon, I don't know exactly when, but it will be soon for sure. And since I am certain that you guys have figured out what building a new cage must mean, there will be lots of other preparation videos coming up over the next couple of weeks, so I really hope you are looking forward to those. In the meantime, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video, you can share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!